going to tell you a story about a genre-defining zombie survival MMO. It made a lot of bold promises, released a bunch of fancy trailers, and then shut down the studio just four days after launch. In the aftermath of the day before and Fantastic, we learned a lot about the BS that went on behind closed doors. The treatment, the development crunch, the claimed five years of blood, sweat, and tears spent in development which has now been shown to be a bold face lie because what I'm about to show you comes from a single developer and a couple of hundred hours of free time. Welcome back to the channel. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and out of all the drama and build up to the launch of the day before, this day after parody project was born. Thanks again for all your continued support for my content. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are of course greatly appreciated. And before we get started on this one, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Winter means bad weather and being stuck indoors, but luckily I've got a gaming remedy where you can seamlessly switch between mobile and PC all while picking from over 800 champions, new updates every month, and over 80 million downloads. Raid Shadow Legends has no shortage of Sub-Zero champions. I like Sir Nicholas because his heal buffs are thick and I dig that whole Bad Santa vibe. The Cursed City is waiting to test you with 100 stages in this free-to-play tactical turn-based RPG, and there's a little something here for everyone, even a mythical champion waiting as your reward. So if you're into collecting champions along with a deep storyline, strategic gameplay, big PvE boss fights, and PvP arenas, along with some pretty slick graphics, Click the link in the video description or scan the QR code on screen to get big bonuses available only via my link. We're talking silver, XP brews, and everyone's favorite, chicken! Additionally, once you're in game, use the promo code RAIDXMAS for new and old players. This all started when I stumbled across the Crimson Dev over on Twitter who was proposing something kind of wild. He wanted to make a day before parody trailer, not only as a learning process, but to clue viewers in to how this could all be achieved. And it took him 400 hours and about $1,500 spent in the asset store. Now throughout this development journey, Crimson consistently posted devlog updates, showing off his creation from the rudimentary kind of beginning building blocks up through combat and landing us on today's full parody trailer. And again, keep in mind, this was made by one person on a shoestring budget and about 400 hours, not the million spent in five years that Fantastic claimed was needed to produce what they eventually launched and then delisted. Now, from the moment you hit start on this parody trailer, you get a sense of what Fantastic had possibly envisioned happening with their release, but either didn't have the technical know-how or the desire to achieve this level of results. And again, remember, $1,500 spent in assets, 400 hours of time, and one developer. So you do the math here. But you instantly start to see those cluttered streets and the overwhelming amount of ground clutter along with the setting, and that instantly sets off my division, Spidey Sense. There's so much more here to interact with though. You've got more obstacles instead of barren streets, more vehicles, there's just a ton more clutter. Now at one point, the character loots a vehicle and we get a look at the character inventory screen, which shows off a three system survival mechanic system we're kind of familiar with, which looks to be health, energy, and hydration, along with a character gear loadout and a full backpack system. A few moments later, we've got the character interacting with a closed door, entering a burnt out shop, looking for supplies. Again, check out all the clutter on the ground. You've also got a few pulsing lights and this general sense that this place is f***ed and we need to get in and get out quick. A little bit further into the trailer, we get to see the crafting system, making use of a crafting bench, things like a noisemaker for distracting zombies, bandages, and a whole host of other items can be made. 
There's also a full scrapping mechanic that's been set up to break down items that are taking up valuable inventory space and weighing down our characters, along with a gunsmith for customizing weapons. Here you see the adding of the optics to this ARV-16. But up to this point, we've seen most of these items appear in that extraction shooter version called The Day Before, albeit they weren't working nearly as well, but they were there in some capacity. But from here on out, this is a whole new day after combat experience, starting off with the weather because it's snowing and we've now stumbled into a full on zombie horde. And check out those bullet damage mechanics. You've got things like decapitation and dismemberment of the zombie targets, things that were promised by the fantastic devs, but never made it into the day before. From here on out, it becomes one big demonstration of what the day before should have looked like. We've got another player rolling up and helping out with the hordes and co-op action, flashlights toggling on and off, bandages being applied from the previous battle wounds. You see things like a much more dynamic lighting system and of course that division ground clutter and snow building up all over on the ground. Zombies are immediately attracted to these two players after the weapons are fired course being attracted by sound zombies that aren't finished off continue to crawl towards these two and then we just go full baseball bats out so we've got a melee weapon system yeah you didn't see that one in the day before along with a kick to stagger targets and even some jumps on display here headshots with the rifles look to one shot kill and then those dynamic environment systems are again on full display with the tracks in the snow division vibes through and through. How about a full mantling system? Yeah, we never saw that in the previous game. Climbing a parked cargo truck to gain access to a second floor open window. And then something I nearly missed, the use of a beer bottle thrown towards a distant car to activate that car alarm, drawing the massive amounts of zombies over to that. So we see stealth and diversionary tactics at play here. All things players were hoping for from the day before, all were not there. Now soon after, you hear this vague clicking noise from a downstairs portion of a building and we get to see a brief PvP encounter which, after all of those shots fired, brings down the full wrath of the waiting hordes. Also, noteworthy is the sound design here and how you can use it to locate exact directions of incoming threats. You don't hear it very much because I'm talking through this commentary, but it's there and I could definitely tell that something was going on downstairs. I will of course leave links to Crimson Dev's Twitter and YouTube page. You definitely need to go check this entire thing out for yourselves, not only so you can just enjoy it, but to get a clearer picture as to how deceitful the messaging coming out of Fantastic truly was. If a single dev with 1500 bucks and 400 hours to burn can make a game better than theirs, everything we've heard about the years spent creating the day before, basically all that throw that out the window because it's now all in question. Now, as of now, Crimson does not plan on turning this into a full-blown playable game as he is planning a new co-op zombie experience despite people like me telling him that if he developed this parody even further and placed it up for sale on Steam, we would buy and play it. And speaking of development, the Brothers Fantastic are up to their old tricks. Latest reports from Games Radar and other sites claim that these two were already putting out hints that they were planning to begin work on a mobile title prior to the day before ever dropping. Furthermore, former developers for the day before who had been the victims of all that workplace mistreatment received job offers to work with the brothers again on their new mobile title and the brothers just seemed to act like everything that had happened at Fantastic Prior, all the mistreatment and shenanigans. Yeah. None of that was real. Reports are that even after all of that, everything that they went through, some of these devs actually accepted the new job offers and apparently had begun work on the Brothers Fantastic next looming failure. Again, I highly recommend you check out this full The Day After parody trailer for yourself and those links are found in the video description. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell. Likes, comments, shares are appreciated. All my socials are found in the video description as well. Shout out to the 189,000 of you that have stuck with me and hit subscribe. 200K is on the near horizon. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer signing off.